last four Big 12 finals. Baylor, of course, captured the automatic bid out of the Big 12 tournament just a couple of years ago at the expense of TCU in one of those finals. Jennifer Want will be the anchor back there for Baylor. She wears the mismatched kit, gets to wear the gloves tonight. And of course, TCU will have Emily Alvarado back in goal, but the question is who will be able to find the back of the net? Messiah Bright, the all everything performer up top for the Frogs, who was simply brilliant last year. Part of TCU's returning 89% of their scoring last year. Bright having seven goals in her final nine matches. She sits out on the red card. We wonder how much Paul Jobson accounted for the fact that she would not be out there as she was a menace in Big 12 play, but she took that red card in the NCAA first round against Arizona. Of course, Eric Bell assumed that meant that non-conference play, they would be without her. But now that we are only playing conference matchups, that means Bright is a spectator tonight. As Eric Bell just says, next woman up. Well, Bright, obviously a big loss tonight for them, but the truth is, is that TCU led the league in shots last year. There's a lot of goals that were on that pitch from other players like Yasmin Bryan, like Gracie Bryan. Yasmin Ryan and Gracie Bryan especially combine well with each other, so there are other players that can put the ball in the back of the net. We are playing college soccer in Waco, Texas. A Big 12 victory on the line tonight. And TCU off to the races early, looking for the quick strike after Baylor claimed the 4-0 victory in Fort Worth last year. Of course, Reagan Padgett, the speedster, senior a year ago, came up with the brace, part of that victory last season. Only Matty Algy is back among the four goal scorers in that contest. Remember last year, Baylor had to make two trips to Fort Worth. The first one, weather was not going to allow them to complete the match. It did not go deep enough to make it official. So Baylor would have to return back up to the Metroplex before the Big 12 tournament. This is a Baylor team where you'll have lots of new names, including 14 freshmen. And if you weren't paying attention, this does not count as a year of eligibility for any of these student athletes. So that means next year, Paul Johnson will not just have these 14 freshmen, but approximately another seven as well in the youth movement. And ball po po poked out by, well, when you talk about freshmen last year, Liz Coyman. You could not have had a better start for the California native, including that hat trick in the win here against West Virginia. She was a part of some of those really big wins last year. Like you said, West Virginia usually dominant in this league, and Baylor handled them really well with that hat trick. And they also took to TCU last year. They beat this TCU team that went to that Big 12 final 4-0 to zero last year. So Baylor had a lot of positives last year, but they still see that season as a disappointment. Slater will send one up ahead. Want is back on her line, waiting for that first shot to come her way. From the top of the 18, there's the shot, but blocked. As stepping in is Yopich, the freshman out of Palo Alto, California. One of your freshmen, who's a day one starter for Paul Johnson's Bears. Something that certainly has helped her grow is her international experience with the Bosnian national team at the U19 level. Ball on the wing, on the boot of Collins. Last year, all freshmen in the Big 12. Her shot goes just high over the top left 90. Collins last year, three goals, eight assists. The Houston product with a fantastic freshman campaign. So close to giving the Horn Frogs the lead on the road. This is a very good start by TCU. They're starting fast. You see some of these new personalities in their new 4-3-3 as well. We saw Michelle Slater get the ball on that left flank, and now Grace Collins on this side getting up the right side. So they're moving it all around the field and attacking with pressure. Well, quick transition the other way. Now, TCU able to land on it, up back to Slater, who will be battling with a freshman in Sarah Horniak. Freshman out of South Lake Carroll High School, which has produced quite a few Baylor Bears over the past few years. That's a high school squad that went to the 6A championship and claimed the gold in Georgetown, just down the road. Here is Horniak. Tough-nosed player literally broke her nose her high school junior campaign in pursuit of that state title. 
reunites not just with former Dragons in high school, but some club teammates as well. And Jessica, you and I were talking about, even though these two coaches didn't have tape on one another from non-conference matches, so many of these players have played with and against each other at the club level. Yeah, I was talking to Allie Henderson for Baylor, and she said that they love to play TCU. There's a lot of familiarity because a lot of these players come out of Houston or come out of the Dallas area. They know each other in that sense really well. They're excited to, to play this TCU team that likes to play attractive soccer. Brian up to Collins. Back over to the Bears again. Here's Coyman. Liz Coyman really had to step up and grow up quickly last year when the top offensive threat Went down for Baylor in non-conference play and a precision poke. Well done by, again, another freshman in Yopic. But Cam Winland again going down early last year meant several Baylor players up front. Uh, increased minutes. We'll see how that benefits them this year. A uh, little tall looking at the top of the area for Taylor Moon. Yeah, that's what I'm excited to see is the two new players up top for Baylor and freshman McKenzie Anthony. And on the right side, Taylor Moon, kind of hampered by injuries last year, came off the bench as a super sub. She's getting the start there. So th I think that was the area they needed the biggest improvement from a year ago is that front line just couldn't quite produce the goals that they're used to producing. 34th consecutive start for em Emily Alvarado for TCU in goal. A member of the Mexican national team system. Her counterpart here in the forest green, Jennifer Wan. Well, we were scheduled to have a full slate of matches tonight, but then again, coronavirus intervening for safety reasons. Bedlam was postponed, Oklahoma unable to play. So Oklahoma State presumably was not going to have a match this weekend. Texas Tech unable to play. They were scheduled to go meet up with K-State. But the Big 12 figured out how to make things work. Tomorrow night, uh, Oklahoma State and K-State will collide, trying to stay on schedule of sorts. Ball poked ahead. Alvarado on her heels. Baylor just unable to get the final touch off the boot of Mac Anthony. But TCU not in the clear. Coyman. And it'll be a corner kick for the Baylor Bears. The fans looking forward to a set piece here. That was a look at two freshmen going head to head there. Mars Aikens moving into that center back position for TCU. This is her first start in college. It's weird to think that your first start is a non conference, not a non conference game, but a conference game that really matters. So she had to hold it down there against another freshman, McKenzie Anthony, up top. Here's Allie Henderson, five assists last year. One of the top distributors in Baylor history. Back post, Alvarado goes up to get it. Well, she has led by example over the years, but the coaches have been surprised when they've heard a certain voice this year. Alvarado's been a vocal leader, more so than even in the past. She has taken advantage of this senior campaign. And mind you, when we call people seniors, they still will have the opportunity to come back and play next year if it makes sense with their future plans. Bears get it right back. A little bit of space here for Collins. Again, all freshman team in the Big 12 last year. But she runs right into Kaylee Abels, the pride of Waco High. Getting to play her college ball in her backyard. Abels now the junior. And ball back over for the Bears. I was talking to Jen Want about these first few minutes, trying to settle the nerves of your team down, being very experienced in the back. She was a part of that 2018 team that went to the Elite Eight for Baylor. And it, she, they've done a great job of handling this very talented front line so far from TCU, have come out right away and put pressure on that back line. Gracie Bryan right down the heart, fires a shot into the shoulder, knocked down by Yopic, right place, right time. But Bears not in the clear. TCU, easy to forget, their last four matches last year, including all three Big 12 tournament matches, 90 minutes was not enough. Their final four matches last year, all overtime. Of course, in the Big 12, we are no stranger to parity from top to bottom in this league. 
So it has Baylor picked as low as seventh in the conference. With that said, they were one of three teams that had a first place vote. I, I think last year is the best year, having covered this now since 2003. I think it was the best year in terms of parity. I mean, when we went to that Big 12 tournament, we had no idea who was going to win that. It could have been any of those teams. That was really exciting last year to see that growth in the league and see how well Kansas did in the postseason as well. But there's still strides they need to make. They need to make regular appearances in the Final Four where West Virginia has really only made that trip. Well, both teams have to be happy with the opportunities they've had here in the opening nine plus minutes as Watt will come up to greet this one. Don't want to gloss over something we mentioned earlier, but since there has not been non-conference play, neither of these coaches had video to watch of one another's programs. Now TCU brings back a lot. I mentioned 89% of their scoring from last year, though no Messiah Bright tonight. And Baylor, a lot of new personnel as we get another look here at the foul. And Coach Bell talked about how they're really just going to mention kind of the Baylor way of playing physically, getting after it. But other than that, they've been focusing on themselves. Because you don't have tape, because you don't really know what formation they're going to come out of or what their personalities are across the field, they have to kind of just focus on their game. So both these teams have really just been focusing on how they want to play this year. Here's Yasmin Ryan who will handle the kick. Six assists shy of being the top distributor in TCU history. Want hoping for a favorable hop. No surprises there as she squeezes it in. So Ryan with plenty on that boot. But Want the first to it. Both these teams turn around and play next Friday night as well. Oh, an own goal perhaps rolling home. It's just wide. A bit of good fortune for the Horn Frogs. Oh, that's when your heart skips a beat. They'll be happy just to give up a corner kick here. Some of those things are going to happen when you haven't played for uh, nine months or so. <laughs> but uh, remember, this back line for TCU is very different from last year. We'll kind of talk about that more in a minute. But they moved some players around on that back line, so they're still going to have to get used to those new positions. Allie Henderson has nine matches of soccer and then a wedding to plan. As this ball squeezed in from Alvarado. Paul Johnson the other day mentioned we'll see whether it's coach speak or not, talking about one match at a time. But for these teams, there is no Sunday turnaround. They really do get to focus on just one match, a full week of preparation. And you want to make the most of those matches with just nine contests on the fall schedule. Slater into the masses. Yeah, she was looking for Collins, just needed a little bit more behind it. Here's Shaylin Hubbard, the junior. Part of 18 shutouts in her time in the midfield for TCU. Flag stays down, Want off her line. Unable to get to it as Slater had she been able to position herself with a better angle, would have had a wide open frame. Instead, corner kick here for TCU on the road tonight. Well, you can see why Coach Bell wanted to move Slater up to that front line. Last year, she played a holding midfield position, which is very different than a forward position. And he mentioned moving her up there, and I was a little surprised. It's very rare that you hear of a holding mid being moved to a forward position in college soccer but she's just been deadly on that left side already getting in behind. Here's Grace Collins who made every start last year as a freshman. Big opportunity for TCU. Bears able to clear it back towards midfield. And it'll be a toss for the Frogs in purple. Randy Peterson will do the honors. Junior out of Atlanta. Has never missed any of her now 44 career matches You mentioned almost two decades we've had a chance to follow the Big 12. Remember when Eric Bell was the newcomer, along with the Horn Frogs. And now all of a sudden, one of the deans 
of this league. And no such luck dancing around Abel's. Bears last year, a lot of tight matches, scored 27 goals, conceded 26. Every night was a grind. That's nothing new for the Bears, as that attitude has helped them capture both a regular season and a tournament crown in the past few years. And a couple of elite eight runs. Collins on the edge of the 18. Able to turn is Anthony. Looking to link up with Koyman, who no doubt will be looking for truly a breakout sophomore campaign. Building on last year. And this time, Abels gets a little help defensively. The woman they call Rocks has been solid so far. That was a beautiful takedown there by Anthony. Most exciting player I think that they've added in terms that she can provide that true target up top. You just saw it there how she can get the ball and bring it down, but a powerful forward that they're hoping can get on some of these balls that Quayman and uh, Moon can send across the box. TCU perhaps eyeing a ball from distance here. Works it back to Slater. Abels has had an eye on her all night, but Slater works around Abels. Stays on foot, and Baylor with the team save. Able to pick up the slack back on the goal line, and it leaves us level nil-nil. Both teams have had their opportunities. Right now, it's TCU. You see, they've been able to pull the trigger on some shots as well, knocking on the threshold. Toss from Peyton Cruz. Cruz saw. Opportunity to shine in the absence of Juracek, one of a couple of injured players returning this year for Eric Bell. Adding to the depth this season. Yeah, she's one of those players that stepped into that center back position when Juracek went out and did really well back there for them. They went to the final again and she played well and Coach Bell wanted to keep her on the field after Juracek healed up and now she's in the midfield. Simply a goal kick for Jennifer Want, of course, for Baylor. And there you see Liz Coyman, who last year, as a true freshman, four goals, three of which against West Virginia. And meant back-to-back -back regular season victories against the Mountaineers. And perhaps the rest of this Big 12 has caught up with Nikki Izzo Brown's club. which wasn't exactly doing a good job sharing the trophies for the first several years. Well, it really had been them and Baylor, right? Like it was those two teams. And last year was the first time where it just seemed it was anybody's to take. And ultimately Kansas put all the pieces together at the end of the year. But it's gonna be interesting to see because there have been some losses for teams like Kansas who lost Katie McClure up top. And some of the top goal scorers in the conference are gone. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see in this short window, we get to see all these teams who can step up and put goals away in just a few games. Abby Schmidt is the first substitution of the half for Paul Jobson. And the Baylor Bears. Again here at Betty Lou Mays Field, that is the Brazos River. Our backdrop tonight. Some great venues for college soccer throughout this conference. And we're fortunate to have, have them showcased this fall. One of
Horn Frogs from distance. Want able to squeeze it in, no mistake. 25 shutouts in her career, including 12 two years ago when she finished fourth in the nation. Part of that run with Baylor into their second straight Elite Eight. Coyman off a shoulder, but trying to track it down. But that's a good look at what Anthony can bring that's similar to Cam Winlet from a year ago is she can post up and flick those punts and those kicks on from Want in the back and try and find Coyman running off of her, try and find Moon running off of her. So she is filling that role similarly to that Winlet did a year ago in terms of being that target. Abel's looking for Moon. Talk about bouncing back from injuries. Taylor Moon back to back years with ACL tears, but appears full strength for this fall. Had a nice article on her on the Baylor Bears website. Some pressure on her right because she's taking over for Reagan Paget on that right side, who is really the leading goal scorer for this team and, and consistent threat with her speed and athleticism on that right flank. So she's got a she's got some big shoes to fill on that right side. Well, all these student athletes did their jump. Simply be prepared for whenever the season was going to start. At one time, it looked like it was going to be a full, robust season, including non-conference play. Of course, we would later learn that the Big 12 would be one of the conferences that would keep fall sports, including soccer, not trying to push it to the spring, but would eliminate non-conference play in soccer and volleyball. So no tune-up matches for these two sides. A valuable three points within reach tonight in the Big 12 standings. Ryan, first team all Big 12 last year, along with Messiah Bright. Again, for those of you tuning in late, Messiah Bright having to sit out tonight, serving the suspension from her red card in the NCAA tournament last year. Ball back post, and that one will just slip away. They were eyeing an opportunity for Maddie Warren over there on the far post, a tad tall for the Los Angeles native. Kaylee Abel's trying to shake things off. And a reminder that there are fans in the crowd. 300 the cap tonight. Lincoln Rose, Jessica Stamp, and Jessica, you and I, we can confirm, are here in Waco on site. Different broadcasts around the country being handled differently. Baylor. Looking to get off that first quality look, trying to sneak one past Alvarado instead. It's another corner kick for the Bears. Nice move there by Anthony to put it back on her right foot, trying to send the ball across the box. Also well defended by TCU. So in 2020, who's your favorite target on these corners? Well, Anthony has clearly demonstrated that they're looking for her head in the run of play, so she's going to be one they're going to look for in the box, I think, as well. They trust this to the left boot of a freshman. Yopich sends it into the mixer. Still not cleared. Coyman, though, unable to get anything behind it. And we will have a pause for an injury inside the six, a horn frog down. Oh, that ball fell to the feet of Coyman. We saw Henderson in there who usually takes these corner kicks. She was in the mix right there as well with Anthony trying to hit that PK spot instead of taking those kicks. I, I talked to her a little bit about her corner kicks and she said that she's got some competition this year from other players to take those corners. So you just saw that they, they can mix it up and have her be in the box and not taking them every time. Little subtle changes here in the pandemic world. Every player has her own individual jug. Paul Johnson in the mix there with his mask. Giving out instructions. And you see the longtime assistant for Eric Bell, Ryan Higginbotham, who's been there all nine years. We mentioned TCU, with all the success they've had in the Big 12 tournament, this year picked third preseason. That's the best preseason ranking for the Horned Frogs. We also mentioned Baylor 
although they're all the way over there in seventh place as picked by the coaches, they actually got one of the first place votes in the Big 12. One of three teams to do so along with Tech and the Cowgirls. How about West Virginia? Right there in the mix down at number four. I think that shows a lot of respect for these teams that maybe had a little bit of a down year last year, but had been really dominant for a while. And uh, the other coaches showing some respect to those programs and understanding that they can rebound from that pretty quickly. Henderson denied by Ryan. And she went right at the senior. And of course, as of oh, about 22 and a half minutes ago, we're no longer concerned about preseason polls. Nine matches on the schedule for each of these teams. A little bit of flexibility in Big 12 scheduling to get them all in. Only one trophy, though, awarded this fall. That's the regular season title. Looking to turn here. Anthony sends one, but still continues to climb over the crossbar belonging to Alvarado. No need to put a paw on that one. A really quick turn there from Anthony, and scouting report on her is that she is really good on the ball, receiving the ball at her feet, posting up like that. She turns quickly, and she's powerful, so she can shoot from a distance like that. That's something they need to be aware of is on a dime, it might be going at Alvarado. Closest we've seen to a goal was going to be an own goal from TCU, a little miscommunication. The ball went wide, Horn Frogs. Never get the final touch. Yeah, Central Texas has been about 15 to 20 degrees cooler than the past few months. That bodes well for the student athletes tonight here in Waco. A lot of rain coming through the region yesterday. Another corner here for the Horn Frogs. It's going to be handled by Grace Collins. And a sophomore last year, three goals, eight assists as a freshman. TCU looking to strike first. Right, Baylor on top of it. And the second touch comes from Moon. Back in. A second chance here, perhaps for Grace Bryan, out to Slater. An excellent effort, appreciated by the fans from Horniak, the freshman. Jennifer Wants saw that ball eight yards in front of her just roll across the face of goal. TCU would get one more shot before Horniak intervened. She'll man the opposite post for this corner. Second chance for Collins. This is where Jurczak will intervene, the Serbian. Oh, nice turn, Baylor with numbers. But Yaz, or pardon me, the Horn Frogs with enough speed, able to make up the ground there. Nothing new from Yasmin Ryan. Baylor had a two on one building, but Ryan able to slip it into gear. Showed her speed there, getting back fast. She's playing that attacking center mid role. We saw her outside left a lot last year, but she's in the attacking midfield, and she had to really get back and track down Moon. Another ball over the top from Baylor. We featured Yasmin Ryan in the opening, but Lincoln, she, she hasn't been that much of a factor so far in the game. We've seen her speed, and we've seen some moments, but I think that's a key for TCU is they need to find Yasmin Ryan in the middle of the park. Again, the elephant not in the room. Messiah Bright not a part of the attack tonight. There's West Virginia. About 20 minutes to go in Ames with the first goal of the Big 12 season. Well played by Slater. She's been busy tonight, but frustrated whenever she gets inside the area. It's 
so far the 1v1 defending for Baylor has just been stellar. When they they seem to try to isolate a Baylor back and go at them on the flanks, and it, it's been effective in the beginning, 10 or 15, but now Baylor's figured it out, and the 1v1 defending is, is just great, but the, the place where Baylor is struggling a little bit is the balls in behind. They're getting, uh, they're getting split with some passes. Here's Ryan. Ryan along the 18, inside the area. Yasmeen Ryan will earn another corner. And perhaps this is where she starts to leave her mark. Some good pressure cover there and dropping from Baylor as Ryan pushed through on the dribble. But that's what you can get from Ryan. If you get her the ball, she can take on like that and open things up. And I misspoke. No intervention from Baylor. It's simply a goal kick here for Jennifer Want. Paul Jobson has to still feel great about what he has in goal. Maggie Burton also returning. Ball slipped through, flag stays down. Want off her line, gets her paws on it. A save from Jennifer Want to keep us scoreless for now. Well, TCU perhaps now with the best look we've seen, but denied by the senior. Moon able to regroup. Giveaway here for Baylor. That back line for TCU. Able to get it right back. Again, that's Juracek. She and Ariana Owens last year lost for the season early with knee injuries. Mentioned it allowed opportunities for some other players to step up. Just a moment ago, TCU this close to finding a lead here on the road. Want shutting that down really fast, coming out getting big, and it was really hard to get her get it past her at that point. But that's really been the only issue for Baylor are those little slipped balls in the gaps. Horniak, as well as freshman on that left side, has had a little bit of trouble dealing with those balls. They just need to remember that as soon as the center med gets it and looks up, they're looking to play it in behind. So they need to drop, and that's what they're talking about right now, is we need to drop and tuck in and get closer to each other so that there's not these big gaps between us and the back line and letting those TCU players in behind. Well, Sarah Horniak, they were not planning to sub for her, but she's coming off. She had to take a knee a moment ago. One of the new names we've learned tonight. Moments ago, we saw her classmate Olivia Mack making her collegiate debut. And we're also seeing Tara Sumer, the sophomore. We mentioned part of that state championship squad at South Lake Carroll. She'll make her 2020 debut. And Olivia Mack, who came on a moment ago, also in the fray. Meanwhile, Eric Bell mentioned to us, you know, in a season like this, maybe he doesn't sub quite as often. With no Sunday matches, rather than playing more numbers with eligibility not being something to be concerned about, perhaps he's a little stingier with minutes with so many players returning from last year. And again, a, a championship on the line with every game and all these teams being so close to each other, every point is gonna count. He has yet to go to his bench so far. I think that's what's gonna be fascinating about this season is how coaches approach it. Cause it's just never happened before this situation. I mean, what do you, do you get a, a lot of players a lot of minutes so they get that experience going into next season? Do you treat it more like a spring, a spring season where you're playing a lot of players to see what you have and that they can develop? Or do you just play your, your best 11 to try and win a Big 12 championship? And I think our understanding, talking to coaches around the league, is that second suggestion, there is a title on the line. They are not treating this like some experiment. Despite the unique conditions. Well, a 
officially Baylor has managed just one shot so far, but they have certainly threatened on several occasions. The athletics calendar officially underway here in Waco. Of course, their football game at McLean Stadium, scheduled for tomorrow against Louisiana Tech, was called off. And after Louisiana Tech saw a spike in numbers, part of that was out of their control because of the hurricane that hit this past month. Final 13, will either team take a lead into halftime? There's a throw coming up here for Ryan and TCU. Cruz right down the middle. Want did not think she'd be able to get a hand on it and there was no need. Never dipping below the crossbar. Take a look at the discrepancy on shots. Jennifer Want coming up with the only save required of her early on. And a foul here on the Bears will keep us on this half of the pitch. So that'll be something that TCU wants to discuss at halftime is how can we make these shots count a little bit more? How can we challenge Want a little bit better with these shots, make our opportunities more quality? I know, you know shooting from 40 yards out is probably not something they, they've talked about a whole lot. It's getting in behind, which they've done really well, but they've struggled to get that final shot off. So that's something they're gonna, they're gonna work out at halftime. Top of the area, met by Baylor. A rocket sent towards the far post. Sarah Norman able to intervene. And Baylor will finally put an end to that attack. See Olivia Mack matched up with Olivia Hassler. Hassler is one of the few freshmen for TCU. No surprise from the Dallas area. Anthony not making it easy. Oh, nice discipline from Mars Akins. Shot comes. Ultimately well wide. Alvarado still puts on her cape, though no need for heroics. And that's a player that Baylor needs to get more involved is Gabby Mueller in the attacking midfield position. Just hasn't got a hold of the ball much, but you see how quickly she turned here, took her space, and then looked to shoot. She's a player that Coach Jobson's really excited about, is adding some of that dynamic to the attack. She's creative, she's smooth on the ball. We've seen her solve, you know, problem solve defensively. She's gotten out of trouble, but she just hasn't been a part of the attack at all till now. Jessica Gabby was one of a handful of Bears who actually enrolled a semester early back in the spring, but there was limited benefit to that, as we would find out. You see the most recent substitution. Pair of them for the Horn Frogs. Alvarado never losing track of that one. And Ogard in. Grace Collins gets her first breather. Norman able to head it back to Want with Ryan applying the pressure. Eric Bell going to the bench a little bit more frequently here in the final 10 plus minutes in the first half. And back with Mueller. He's looking for Olivia Mack. A couple of freshmen looking for an instant impact in their Big 12 careers. Ball stays with Baylor. They're going to allow a Trio of subs 
Two for the home side and one for the visitors from Fort Worth here. Gabby Mueller will get a breather. No, she's actually going to stay on part of it. She thought she was coming off. It's Nicolette Lewis, the junior transfer from Pepperdine. Chloe Brown, one of uh, a couple of Brown sisters over the years to play for Baylor, her sister Kennedy. It's going to be Kennedy Stidham. Also number 23 for the Baylor, Juliana Cunningham, number 26. Well, how's college soccer looking here in 2020 to you? I'm just so thankful we have it. Um, I mean, I kind of figured after the first 10 minutes, it'd be like back to normal, you know? And I think that's what they were all banking on is that gratitude um, and the opportunity to play is something they've been thinking about for all of preseason. But now that you're actually playing, it's something you've done your whole life. You're comfortable here. This is this is where you thrive is on the soccer field. And it's just about playing another game. And um, that's really exciting, too, to have that bit of normalcy back in their lives. Remember, in the offseason, coaches are not allowed to really dictate how their players train, and mind you, during a pandemic, all of a sudden, then the players are not just on their own to train, but figure out creative ways to maintain their fitness. Paul Jobson reminded us that actually some of his freshmen had played soccer a lot more recently than his returning players because of club tournaments starting back up. Otherwise, those who are focused on high school soccer, remember in Texas, that's just a spring sport, which means a lot of them did not suit up this past year. It sounded like there was a mix, right? That some were able to touch the ball quite a bit and then some really didn't touch it hardly at all. So that's the the positive of having a long preseason like they did. That's one of the positives is they, they had lots of time to try and get that back, right? Uh, it's like riding a bike after a while, but they had more time to get fit as well as get their touch back. Yasmin Ryan from midfield up into the area. Yeah, when you talk about preseason, that's not usually really a luxury for college soccer whose first match of the season is often before classes even begin. Now, usually it's, it's about two weeks. You're doing two-a-days. It's very intense. And then you scrimmage. And then the following week you play. And they, they were able to space out their practices in this preseason so they could do one-a-days if they wanted. And there's more rest. So Coach Bell saw a lot of positives in that. Bears get their numbers back. Norman heads that one down. Next shot ultimately goes one. Tenth shot produced from TCU in the first half. Yasmin Ryan becoming the factor that we knew she would be. I know I've mentioned this already a couple times, but it's worth mentioning about 20 or so odd occasions. Messiah Bright not in the match tonight. Red card in the NCAA tournament against Arizona meant she was going to have to set out a match. Most coaches would think no big deal. That just means a non-conference season opener. Probably would have a good chance to win it without her. But with Bright out, that's your most outstanding offensive player from last year's Big 12 tournament. 12 goals on the season last year in a sophomore campaign. Ball chipped in. And no mistake made there defensively. Tara Sumer intervening. And a touch for the freshman, Chloe Brown. Hubbard every minute so far of this first half. Taps it back to Juracek. And a welcome sight to see number six in purple back out there on the pitch healthy. Approaching the last four minutes of this opening half. College soccer back underway. Season opener doubling as the conference opener this year. Not every 
conference that opted to play football this fall, decided to keep soccer and volleyball during the fall. When the NCAA announced that they would host a spring tournament for those sports, we saw conferences like the American and Conference USA push to the spring. Now another look here at the foul. Nice move by Shea Hubbard here, juking and drawing that foul in a good position outside the box. So they can really whip this in and get some pressure on Want here at the end of the half. Opportunity here. Ryan sends it in, but a trio of Bears all waiting. Not sure if that makes Ryan Goldilocks, but TCU back on it with three minutes to spare. Tough angle. And the final bite of the apple came from Haley Mallon. Mallion just off the mark there, the senior. TCU is overloading with numbers. They'll push their defenders up, and all these numbers just keeps the ball in Baylor's defensive end. I think that's a big difference between the two teams right now is when TCU goes forward, they go with numbers. And it's really hard for Baylor to get out of it. But when Baylor sends it, their forwards are a little bit too isolated. They need more support underneath from Gabby Mueller, from those midfielders, so that they can keep the ball in the other half and away from Want. Barron able to tap this one over to Hassler to maintain the possession. Alvarado. Alvarado's had a chance to catch her breath, but perhaps a Baylor attack building here inside two minutes. Paul Johnson goes back to his bench. And here is the sub for Gabby Mueller. Number 13, Michaela Gorman, replacing number 13. Kayla Gorman makes her sophomore debut. Of course, she grew up with a dad who played college soccer at Oregon. Last year produced two goals in her 17 matches. And an early touch sends it inside the area. And Alvarado will simply have a goal kick here as we approach the final 60 seconds of the opening half. Alvarado again making her 34th consecutive start. Three times in her career, academic all Big 12. Such a constant there between the pipes. We'll come out for this one. We've seen some great goalkeeper competition throughout the Big 12 for each team. It's been a position of depth. And we've seen some very good goalkeepers lose their starting gigs to talented freshmen and sophomores. But here's a senior, Ryan, great step inside. Yasmeen Ryan sends it, and a late stop from Baylor. Wow. And it looks like TCU will run out of time. Another close call. As we get a couple of looks here, the ball off the boot of Yasmeen Ryan. As you can see, she's shuffling and defending, but Ryan just puts it on her left foot, whips it in. Want can't quite hold on to it, but luckily her defender is there dropping in behind as Abel's covers that. And boy, that was close. I mean, it's a big difference going down a 1-0 going into the half here in the seconds. That could be pretty deflating. So that was a big save there by Abel's to react. It was the 12th shot of the first half. Another scary moment throughout this fall. Big 12 moving forward with both. And of course, this week you saw the Big 12 media days for football as well. As for the Bears, Mac Anthony, one of the new players to get to know this year, one of seven freshmen to make their debuts here already on their home turf. Eric Bell talked to us about a new look. He was not going to try to force personnel to fit his style. Instead, he was going to make the Horn Frog style play best fit the talent he had here this season. 
And perhaps a quick opportunity already right out of the gates. Opportunity there for Maddie Warren. Instead, out wide, Ryan has her shot deflected. And Jennifer Want able to intervene. Tough bot battle all night long. Well, that's the problem uh, I think Baylor's having is as soon as a forward gets it, like Moon there, there needs to be at least two players underneath her providing options. And she just had nobody. She had nobody to play to. And so she tried to turn on Peterson and just really had nothing in terms of help around her. And such a great venue here in Waco. Brooke Bednar is joining us there at halftime, chatting with both of the head coaches. Always generous with their time. You and I have been spoiled over the years, getting to know all the coaches around the league. And some of them did not expect to be spectators tonight tuning in on Big 12 now. They thought they'd have matches of their own. But we did have one match added to the schedule tomorrow out of an adjustment. Nice job by the league to be able to adapt. So Oklahoma State and K-State tomorrow night. Top of the area, but nothing will come of it. And four shots on goal from TCU in that first half. And West Virginia has a full three points. They will wake up atop the table in the Big 12 tomorrow. Question is, will one of these two teams be tied with them for first place after week one? Of course, a uh, new era in Ames. Quick restart here for the Horn Frogs. Now this is better from TCU. I think both of the teams need to keep the ball a little better. They're just being a bit too aggressive to the point where they're turning the ball over and just giving it to the other team. So I think they need to be a bit more patient and swing it instead of sending in these low percentage passes up top when they're marked tightly on that top line and kind of just knocking it around instead and waiting for those opportunities where there's a little bit more space for their forwards. Mention our officials tonight, Daniel Radford, Tiffany Turpin and Ethan Fry. Just about to get started in Austin with the second half between your defending tournament champions, the Jayhawks. Mark Francis brings his women from Lawrence down to Austin to meet Ange Kelly's squad. Able to turn, but the shot from Mac Anthony immediately denied. As Alvarado still has not needed to produce a save. Chipped over the top. Trying to turn. Mueller from 19 out. And Alvarado able to play it inside the box. Much better sequence there from Baylor. Knocking it around in tight spaces. That's very encouraging. And again, the engine there, though, was Gabby Mueller. She needs to be involved. She kind of was driving that possession in their offensive third there. First save from Alvarado comes 49 minutes in. Abel's back to want. I do like that switch, though, to put Abel's on this right side against Slater. I think that. That matchup is a little bit better for Baylor and having Horniak, the freshman, move along that other line. She just was getting exposed quite a bit by Slater. See what Mac has in mind. Anthony from the edge sends one in across the spot, and a trickler to Alvarado is the result. Paul Johnson focused on 
the contrast we saw in the first half between his young team and the veterans for TCU, but have to be pleased the result was level. It, it sure sounded like he was thankful to get into the half without giving up a goal, and they did have that scare uh, with Abel saving it essentially behind Want at the final seconds, and he thinks, well, now this is a, a whole new half. We need to turn it around. Ryan, nobody to play with that on the wing. We could watch Ryan and Abel's all evening. Yasmin wins this one around a second bear. Shot on goal, Want with the stop. Punches it wide, but not in the clear yet. TCU with a corner coming. So here's that flash from Ryan, just really quick to push the ball out in front of her and then whip one on frame. Want there, though, shifting over quickly so she could stop it. Ryan there just flat out beat two players by herself on the dribble. They got to be aware of that, that she can play in those tight little corners, those tight spaces. Both those stops from TCU coming this half, but right now it's TCU back on the attack. Randy Peterson will send this one in. Again, Jennifer Watt growing up never played goalkeeper until high school, making the adjustment. She was a three-time conference all conference hoops player growing up. But has been a natural ever since putting the gloves on. Coyman. TCU ultimately would go to the bench four times there in the first half. We saw six subs for Paul Jobson and the Bears. See what the mindset is throughout this second 45 minute period. And there's always the chance for the two overtimes as well, especially if this score holds. Let's check back in with Brooke Bednarz down on the pitch. Thanks, Lincoln. Maddie Algy is in this game, and there's a significance to that. This is the first time she's played in months. She was cleared by her doctor on August 1st, very prepared to play this game because she's suffered two ACL tears. Her first one came just weeks after she had been named Big 12 Freshman of the Week, earning those honors, already making a difference in this game, and she unfortunately tore her ACL. They're, we're gonna, there's penalty here, so we'll send it back up to you. Yeah, just to build on that story with Maddie, she actually arrived on campus getting the nickname Wheezy from her teammates because she arrived her freshman year with pneumonia. She's had constant obstacles, but she has continued to break through those walls. And great to see her again in the starting lineup tonight. Former All-State player and state runner-up at Marcus High. That one will take a hop wide of Jennifer Wants sprint. Nine minutes in here to the second half. and do we see a team dominate on shots, but it's the other team that makes their one quality look count. Too often in soccer. <laughs> it can be heart heartbreaking um, to really dominate a team and just can't seem to score. As prolific as TCU has been with opportunities to, again, just imagine last year's most outstanding player in that tournament, Messiah Bright being a part of it. Icing on the cake. Ball lobbed in, just a tad tall for Coyman. Alvarado scoops it up. This is already much better, though, from Baylor, and much more even looking. They're getting a hold of the ball more, keeping it, and their, their service is a bit more dangerous as well. So they're they're settling in much more in this half, and that 
that's something Coach Jobson talked about is, okay, we got that first half out of the way. All the nerves are gone now, right? Everyone's gotten their first opportunity as a freshman. Now it's about playing how they want to play. Let's uh, check back in with Brooke. Thanks, Lincoln. Just want to pick back up with that story for Algie. This is such a big game. She's finally getting those minutes well earned. But she did, unfortunately, tear that ACL the first time, five minutes into it for sixth game. That was against Nebraska back in 2018. She healed from that surgery, got to play in 2019. Lots of solid minutes, but throughout the season continued to suffer through knee pain. At the conclusion of that season, they went and did a scope and found out that her ACL was just hanging on by threads and made the decision to get surgery for a second time. She's been recovering. Unfortunately, was going to have to miss this year, but she finally got back healed up and was very fortunate to be cleared by the doctor, like I said, on August 1st. And here she is making minutes and playing in the middle of the field for the Baylor Bears. And she managed 15 starts, 18 appearances last year. Uh, finally realized needed that surgery in the off season. Jessica, we talk about Baylor and last year, even though these Bears went four and five in conference, finishing seventh, they led the Big 12 in shots per game, as well as shots on goal per game, almost eight and a half. They just couldn't get the ball going to the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, that was the area that they just struggled in last year, is just finishing. I mean, everything else was really falling into place in terms of defensively, midfield, but they just couldn't find the finish. And, th and then it seems like it would turn on against some teams like West Virginia, and the goals just poured in. It was just feast or famine, it seems like. And for young teams, consistency is really what tends to hurt them throughout the years. They drop games they shouldn't drop and they, uh, they let up at certain points in the game and give the other team an opportunity to get back in it. And I, I think both these teams, looking at last year, something they learned is they, they just have to be more consistent, especially now in the Big 12 when everyone's so even. Those teams at the top that finish out that way, like Kansas, Oklahoma State last year, they, they were just a lot more consistent across the board back to front. Baylor was only shut out twice in Big 12 play last year, and that was against uh, the league leaders in Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. Twice produced four goals, including against TCU. Mentioned West Virginia as well, with the win here over the Mountaineers. Flag is up offside, and that'll end the attack building from Mac Anthony. And Mac Anthony from Wheaton, Illinois. It's a reminder of Paul Jobson, his previous job with the wife Marcy up there at Northern Illinois with that turnaround before now this past decade in Waco. But still some good ties up there. And that includes some quality signings still making their way down, including Mueller, one of the starters, the Michigan native. And this ball back over to Baylor. But again, we're mindful of several college coaches from around the country tuning in just to get their fix before their seasons get underway. If their conference does have fall soccer, want to say hi to everyone and certainly appreciate what coaches have had to go through. Talk about flexibility. Just waiting for that green light, having to prepare for your full schedule, then perhaps an adjusted schedule, perhaps trying to find someone to fill your schedule, only to then have it erased. They've had a little less downtime than a lot of us during the past six months. Well, I wondered how much it affected recruiting because usually the coaches are very busy over the summer. They're traveling all over the country to regionals and nationals and different showcase events. And I mean, that was all gone. So that's, I, I wondered if that had a big effect on the recruiting efforts for this year um, and having to adapt to just not being able to see the, the players as much. And a foul, let's see if a card comes out. And a socially distanced yellow awarded. And is that one given to Sumer? Just late on this tackle, this poke. And we've seen that a few times as TCU's very confident on the ball, taking on quite a bit 1v1 and trying to push it back past those Baylor players. 
So you just have to be careful that they keep these fouls at a distance. Like this is a this is pretty far away, but so far Yasmin Ryan's balls into the box have have been with a lot of pace and pretty threatening. And Daniel Radford, our referee tonight. Yasmin Ryan will drive one in. Want able to do enough to send it away. And it will not be a corner, instead just a throw here for TCU. Whipped in again in that PK spot, but Want was coming out already to at least get something on that, redirect it, push it away. About to have completed the first hour of college soccer this fall for these two clubs. Back into the area. And with the flag up, Jennifer Want will get to simply track down this ball and restart things just outside the area. TCU last year outscoring opponents 39 to 26. Again, they return 89% of their scoring from last year. Now that includes Messiah Bright with her 12 goals from last season. trying to turn that time, but locked up with the veteran, Sarah Norman. Juracek. Boy, when that ball lands with Yasmin Ryan in the midfield, she has a lot of options. This time we'll see Hubbard lose it back over to the home side. And the home side will make a sub here. Maddie Algy will get a breather. Abby Schmidt back on. One of a couple of Oregon natives in the match tonight. Horn Frogs looking to strike here in the second half. But Sarah Norman intervenes again with other ideas. Slater at Norman. And that'll be blocked off the left foot of Yopic. Setting up the corner kick here. Jennifer Want needing to organize the troops. Trying to keep these zeros on the board a little longer. And Grace Collins, eight assists last year. Right footed delivery. Hangs up there a tad tall for Grace Bryant. Hubbard to Slater. Norman denies the left boot. Just tough, tough to beat these Baylor players. They're just doing such a good job, 1v1 defending. Ball sent in, and another opportunity for TCU. This time it's Abel's saying no man. And our camera's been trained on Jennifer Want quite a bit over the past couple of minutes. And it's back to Collins in the corner. First touch for Baylor. And finally, that back line for Baylor can catch its breath. Multiple set pieces thwarted by the Bears. And a 
another tight match in the Big 12. No surprise to anyone who's followed this league over the years. Chloe Brown debuted in the first half, back on here for classmate Anthony. Brown, one of four daughters for the Brown family, two of whom now have suited up for the Bears. And it looks like Eric Bell will make some changes as well in just a moment. As Emily Alvarado, we can confirm, is still in this match. She's been a spectator for much of the second half. And her frogs give her a lead to defend. Abels comes out to Slater. Not so easy. Trying to turn here off the header from Brown. I mean, these outside TCU players are really just facing up and, and taking on it. They're not even looking to combine with Yasmin Ryan or anyone in the midfield to get in. They just face up every time and are looking to take Abel's on. And uh, the outside players try and turn those corners, but it's just not working right now. I mean, the they're up to the task at this point, Baylor. So I think TCU needs to needs to try something different. They need to maybe come inside on the dribble and try and slip something through, or they need to combine and try and get in behind that way and use Ryan to do that. A couple of changes up top for TCU. Yeah, Slater and Collins will take a seat. Collins after several opportunities from the corner. But we are still level. Looking for the first goal of 2020 here in Waco. Just about midway through the second half. Avery Barron among the subs, the freshman from the Houston area from Pearland High. A nice step through from Hassler. An even finer performance there defensively from Mueller. A couple of freshmen going at it. College competition for these two athletics departments. The nice switch there from Peterson to change the point of attack for TCU. There, you can tell they're really trying to stretch Baylor. They're very wide. They're just pulled apart, and they're trying to expose those gaps even more. Baron Drun keeping this alive. Baylor able to clear it out, but not completely in the clear. Stays with TCU. Peterson will toss it back in. Chipped in, top of the 18. And Jennifer Want uncontested. We'll take it off a couple of hops. Paul Johnson will go back to his bench. So Baylor started the half really well, and then it seems to be shifting back toward TCU, the momentum. So this is an opportunity for Coach Jobson to get back on his players and say, hey, look, y'all were doing really well that first 10, 15 minutes, knocking the ball around, getting in behind a lot more, getting some opportunities. Get back to that. Take care of the ball a little bit better. Don't just hand it over to the other team. Don't just boot it and uh, 
hope for a 50-50 to fall their way, actually make an effort to send in nice balls to your teammates so that they can uh, work the ball around the field and, and get some chances in behind. They're just, they're just kicking it up the field a little bit too much without taking a moment to look up and find a player's feet. And so far, for both teams, these long 50-50 balls are, are not really effective. The, the defense is just so good at heading and getting on them, getting them out. Tarasun, we're back in. Trying to get a look at what happened. Just came down funny. With uh, presumably cramp there in the left calf. It allowed for a hydration break for her teammates and TCU. Sarah Horniak will come back in for her. Even the pros going with hydration breaks. That's part of the restart. Major League Soccer and the lower levels also going with additional substitutions, not just the strict three. So scoreless here. Lincoln Rose, Jessica Stamp with you. Let's check in with Brooke Bednars. Lincoln, yeah, just a quick break. We're still scoreless here, but we did want to take a look at the Big 12 and what the else has been going on with soccer. Uh, West Virginia played at Iowa State and came away with a 2-0 win. And then right now, Kansas and Texas are matched up, and it is still tieless, tied 0-0 scoreless there as well. Back to you. Brooke, thank you. That game in Austin on Longhorn Network tonight. Great to have you with us here on Big 12 Plus. Or pardon me, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. And we continued spring coverage earlier this year, but of course that got interrupted. At least soccer got in its full season last year. But wasn't quite sure what the 2020 fall campaign would look like until really late last month. Baylor's excited about fall sports. That includes volleyball, which went into the NCAA tournament last year as the number one overall seed nationally. They return Yasiana Presley and a lot of the firepower that won the Big 12. This ball sent in and ultimately just on the wrong side of the ponytail. Jennifer Watt will not need to make the stop as the attack finished with TCU up there with Abby Ogard. Really nice ball here back post, but Horniak getting ball side, so it was really difficult to get up and connect with that one well because of her presence in the front there. But Horniak back on this right side as uh, Michelle Slater not on the pitch currently. Saying farewell to the 70th minute. Still 17 to five overall discrepancy on shots in favor of TCU. Baylor has forced Emily Alvarado to make some stops at least here in the second half. And perhaps Baylor with another shot coming. TCU's done a nice job keeping Coyman out of threatening situations after the opening minutes of tonight. All the league learned the name Coyman last year in her fantastic freshman campaign. And Yasmin Ryan, one of the seven returning starters this year, 16 players who had meaningful minutes back this year. Coyman's going to come off. Now for Paul Johnson and the Bears. Henry Free the Bears. Number 14, McKenzie Anthony. You see McKenzie Anthony returning. Number 14, Henry Free the Bears. Anthony's from Wheaton, Illinois, best known for the Wheaton Thunder, the Division III college where her parents both played. Mom, women's tennis, dad, men's soccer. Some brothers who played football and basketball. But 
She left the backyard to come to Waco. saw so much tempo in those early minutes and we'll see if they can maintain that kind of pace here in the critical moments now inside the last 18 minutes of regulation. Uh, Brandy Peterson with the throw there, Eric Bell singing her praises with the preseason she had really focused 31 times in her career has played the full 90 for TCU. And somehow she's in even better shape. I was really impressed with her last year in that, that center back position. I thought she had a very good Big 12 tournament. And I know she's very experienced having played in there in the last two years before this year, but moving her to the outside here is going to be interesting because she came out of the back actually quite a bit in that center back position. She took space, as you've been seeing all of TCU do. So clearly Coach Bell has talked to them about, hey, if there's space in front of you, take it. Open things up that way for us. But now she's on this left flank, so she's going to be expected to get up that side even more. Nobody has covered less ground the last nine years in the Big 12 on the sidelines than Eric Bell. That is a man who finds himself a comfortable chair, trusts his staff, and trusts his players that the plan is in place. I don't know if he has other outlets for nervous energy. Always looks calm with the cap on. Will his Horn Frogs find that game opener? 16 minutes in regulation before we start talking about a golden goal. Is Baylor not in the clear here. TCU is going to make another personnel change as Abby Ogard will exit the freshman from Tacoma. And good to see Grace Collins back on. Well rested after those corner kicks. And an opportunity here from TCU inside of 40 yards and a yellow to go with it as well. Yasmin Ryan doing a good job on the dribble, cutting in front of the player, in front of Henderson to kind of box her out there. And that resulted in Henderson clipping her heels so that she uh, went down. But you can also see the frustration in Yasmin Ryan, who's gotten a hold of the ball quite a bit in the midfield, but just can't seem to get a clear shot on goal. She's been taking on it quite a bit and just can't release it fast enough to get that shot that challenges want. Card was on Henderson. It was not for any dissent there from Ryan, who won the call. Yasmin Ryan, low driving kick. Corner coming up here for the Horn Frogs right after Grace Collins re enters the match. They've been chipping away. Baylor has been disciplined so far on these set pieces. Critical stretch here. And 
no second touch for Ryan. It's Abel's again. And I stand corrected, it was Yasmin Ryan for the initial comments. Not realizing she had won the foul. But the card was, in fact, on Ryan. She'll try to shake it off here. Yasmin from 20. No deflection. Goal kick from Want coming up. So that was actually her best opportunity. She had a clear shot on goal and just is a little bit off balance here. She'll take it over the outside and then rips it. And you can see how she was falling backward there and got under the ball. And that's why it went really high. But that was the best setup for herself that we've seen all game. And she just needs more of those so that she can lean over them and, and strike them on frame. Late second half here. Uh, these points meant to be split. Or can somebody find a game winner? And that's the audible from the Big 12 there. It'll be right here on Big 12 now in Manhattan. Wildcats and Cowgirls were not scheduled to meet until a couple months from now. But some adjustments made after both of their matches were canceled. Scheduled for today with COVID concerns for both Oklahoma and what would have been a Bedlam clash as well as Texas Tech. And everybody's been singing the praises of Big 12, Dana Scherf and company of keeping these coaches informed and having a plan ready for college soccer this fall. Off the right boot, no ma'am, Norman denies. Second bite at the apple will wind up into the arms of Want before she smothers it. And now with the opportunity lost, uh, Collins goes down favoring a knee. This might be the only way you're gonna beat Abel's is if she slips like that. But Norman already in the cover position to help out. And uh, really unfortunate here is this looks like a tough injury for Collins. Not sure what happens after her shot here. Looks like right here. She wasn't able to completely plant that left boot. Hit a defender. <laughs> and Collins, just a sophomore. <laughs> Hard to imagine much better of a freshman campaign than she had helping guide TCU in that run through the Big 12 tournament last year in Kansas City, at least for now. <laughs> Remember this year, scheduled to start at least a three-year agreement down the road in Round Rock, just north of Austin. You would learn eventually last month that the conference tournament was scrapped. But a championship on the line here in this nine game regular season of the Big 12. Eric Bell, here's what he needs to. And again, has so much trust in Ryan Higginbotham, who's been with him since day one and rebuilding this program. Well, he's that pipeline into Dallas, right? And the Dallas clubs and Coach Bell came over from Florida State, went to Final Fours with Coach Krikorian over there has that kind of experience, but he was coming to a new place in terms of recruiting and the types of players that you're gonna get at TCU are gonna come out of such a wonderful resource of clubs now and in the Dallas area, especially. So, I mean, that tandem between the two of them, uh, we've seen has been pretty special in that they, they've had success pretty quickly once they paired up there in the Fort Worth area. Is Horn Frogs again picked third to finish the Big 12 this year behind Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. But he believes this is a unique situation. TCU could be grabbing its first Big 12 trophy after nine matches. And he's got the right personnel to do it. Got that pretty good free agent he'll get next week back. And Messiah Bright. Of course, she has to sit out tonight. 
junior from Dallas. What a run she was on, former Big 12 co-freshman of the year. Algie in, Mueller out. Mueller among the many newcomers. She's from Macon, Michigan. Mueller is also one of the many Baylor players with nicknames originating from uh, that animated Ice Age movie. Her nickname is Scrat. She apparently appreciates that people think she looks like the squirrel always chasing the acorn. Well, don't recall him ever getting it. But she's been pursuing that ball throughout the evening. And we've been very fortunate weather-wise again. A lot of rain in the area. We've been in low 90s a lot of evenings up until this week. As for humidity, for you and me at least, it feels just like room temperature. I was thinking uh, you know, after all this time it, in the heat for these two teams in the preseason, they've really been grinding it out in that Texas heat. Um, that just adds to almost the bliss of tonight, being able to play for the first time in such a long time, but it also being such a nice night at a really perfect venue in terms of the field. And um, I mean, it, it really does almost seem like a dream come true given our adversity in recent months. Getting credit to all the operations folks here, in this case tonight at Baylor, with all the safety measures in place. Now, last time these two played, as you see the, the battle here, it's getting even more physical in the second half. The last time these two played, it, there was a pretty raucous Baylor crowd when they played here before. Ball lingers inside the 18. Yeah, we are no stranger to being serenaded by the student band right. here on site. So I was a little bit concerned that if there were no fans at all, would Baylor have that lift? Because it sure seemed to lift them in that 4-0 victory over TCU last year. Uh, they just took it to TCU. And, and luckily, they, they have a bit of a crowd here, but they still haven't seemed to really match the intensity and the urgency that TCU has brought down. Grace Collins appears to bounce back. Yeah, no Golden Wave uh, providing us with a soundtrack tonight. But 300 fans were invited in, a mixture of the community, parents, as well as students. Plenty of media as well starving for sports to cover. And of course, no shortage of dignitaries as President Livingston and the first gentleman with front row seats. But they're pr proud parents of a certain volleyball player as well. will be competing this fall. I should say a member of the staff. Algy. Final 10 minutes of regulation. Does it just come down to one mental mistake? That allows one of these teams to capture the full three. Ryan Want backpedaling. Ryan trying to get back on it, but Jennifer Want with enough support from Bears and White Kits tonight. As they had the extra defender marking Yasmin Ryan. And Slater's going to lose this one. In a battle there with Abby Schmidt. So again, just too many touches on the ball and slow releases by the TCU players are allowing those Baylor players to get back and double team the player that has the ball. That's got to be the key for TCU as Baylor does such a good job of helping each other out defensively that they, they have to get it and release it quicker, serve it into the box or keep possession. And even on that last opportunity by Ryan, she had, she had her player beat, but she needed to pull the trigger. And she just waited too long, and that allowed Baylor to, to get stuck in and get the ball out. Something you didn't see, Grace Collins has had to exit the match. We thought she was going to be able to continue. A little hobbled now it is with the trainer. May not have a chance to factor in to the outcome tonight.
Oh, well, pl well played. Just a tad heavy and a huge collision. Now, can't imagine any malice there. Head down, looking for the ball, and then running right into Juracek. And tough, then. Juracek had her eye on the ball looking up field as well, so she didn't really see Moon brace for her as she was coming at her. But I was excited to see her back in the lineup tonight, the Serbian national team. Stalwart is basically an anchor in that center defense, so it was kind of frustrating when she had those injuries last year that prevented her from helping out at the end of the year. Yeah, she hasn't played soccer in almost a year. September 15th last year was when she went down. And let's see if we have a clock issue. Right now, 8.08 on this second half clock. I think they're going to put 8.25 up on the clock. And of course, uh, every second critical now here. Juracek able to continue. Gets us started again, taps it up ahead to Cruz. Big 12 conference opener. Lone meeting of the season between the Bears and Horned Frogs. And that ball does go in touch. So attack comes to an end prematurely for the Bears. TCU at home next weekend against the Longhorns, who are in action tonight against the Jayhawks. That's the next road trip for TCU up to Lawrence. Baylor, back-to-back -back road games over the next two weeks. Texas Tech, then Iowa State. Iowa State coming up short tonight, 2-0 against West Virginia. Baylor has it. Anthony keeps it in play. Opportunity still alive, and it's a corner coming up for Baylor. Well, the Bears have not had many opportunities as of late, but perhaps this their chance. Mikel Gorman will come back on as a five foot nine target for Baylor. Yapich, the freshman. Left footed delivery, looking for the lead. And TCU survives. All the way back to Want. Silky touch there from Mackenzie Anthony. We've seen some of that. She gets some troublesome balls played into her and she just takes it down out of the air with her chest or with her foot right to herself. Turning, very encouraging from the young player from Baylor. Corner a moment ago from Yopic. That's a good chance. I mean, it's right in that spot that Alvarado has to make a decision. Do I come out? Do I stay? And you don't want to play it close enough to her that she can just easily grab it out of the air. So that, that's a good ball in there. Just tons of bodies protecting that six. Who wants it more? As Gorman may be picking up the foul. Second time Juracic goes down. The yellow for the sophomore. And you can understand why TCU fans would be extra protective of that Serbian defender after last year. Dangerous flying in there like that. I mean, understandably trying to just poke the ball along and win the ball along, but right toward Juracek's feet. 
And Baylor clearly picking it up in the second half as Coach Jobson talked about that he felt like they needed a bit more bite. It seemed like TCU had come out with much more urgency than they did and he challenged them to pick it up a bit. We see that in the second half, but they just seem to be a step slower than TCU, a little, little late on these tackles. Alvarado, part of seven shutouts last year. Both keepers working on one at the moment. Slater kept off of it. A corner kick though, coming up for her Frogs. What a great night for Kaylee Abels. Sing the praises for both back lines. So here's Yasmeen Ryan. We talked about her seven goals last year, but also nine assists. After Grace Collins has to exit, Ryan will handle the duties from the corner. Another great strike from Ryan towards that back post. She was looking for Gracie Bryan, but Baylor comes up with the stop. Fans come to their feet in Waco. Taylor Moon just a little low on steam after having to run through that purple gauntlet. See Mark Francis picking up the win on the road in Austin tonight down I-35. At that tournament in Kansas City, just about in their backyard, about 45 minutes from campus all these years, finally got that automatic bid. It was last year at the expense of the Horn Frogs in overtime. They'll play on. Kaylee Abels was able to win that ball, but no damage done. TCU back on it. Slater. Jennifer Watt will backtrack to her line. And Abels is going to continue pulling anybody in purple trying to enter the area. Space here for Brian. Peyton Cruz will feed it in. And somebody a goal kick. Okay, they'll make a change. Olivia Mack comes off. And Coyman is in for these final two and a half minutes of regulation. If I recall correctly, Coyman was robbed of a goal last year. They only played about a half. I don't know if it was Oklahoma or if it was that first effort against TCU. Te technically never happened. I think you are seeing, though, a display of both these teams' defenses. And usually at the start of the season, that's that's where you want to solidify things, is in the defense first. Horniak comes out. Yasmin Ryan sends one through. Just unable to connect. 12 yards out. Approaching the final minute of regulation. Without a goal, we put another 10 minutes on the clock. No obligation to play the full 10. Sudden victory, golden goal in effect. 
Both teams can avoid that scenario for the next 50 seconds. And after a long wait, welcome back to Big 12 Soccer. We've got another classic unfolding here. We'll step aside for a moment when you rejoin us in Waco. It will be the first overtime with a fresh 10 minutes on the clock. Golden goal rule in effect for Paul Johnson and Eric Bell's women here in Waco. A little bit more. Uh, try to just push their way up the field. And for TCU, I, I think it's just more of the same. He's finally saw Yasmin Ryan turn the corner there and get across, across the box, but uh, just not letting up that energy they've had all game long. That su second note about the subs, it's essentially like the first half. You're not gonna see a player subbed off and then allowed to come back on. So substitutions will be made wisely by these two coaches. Yasmin Ryan, can she produce the golden goal? She has two of them in her career in overtimes. One of three Horned Frogs who have game winners in overtime on their resumes. So this overtime will continue to play in the same direction as we saw the first 90 minutes come to a conclusion. If we go to a second overtime, we'll flip ends. Again, preseason poll. This is your number three team versus your number seven. No surprise, not much difference. Can Baylor defend its home turf? And a foul. This could be it for TCU if they handle it correctly. Dangerous opportunity again, straight away. It's kind of an awkward spot though because it, it's far enough out that you can't really take a shot. And then if you chip it here into the box, it doesn't have much pace on it, and it's hard to redirect it. So we're going to see what TCU has up its sleeves here. This is a time for a, a way to try and deflect the ball into the back of the net. We've seen Ryan with some driving boots here. This time she does chip it back towards the line. Wante able to punch it out. That goal line is exposed, and a little team save there inside the six. Baylor's throwing numbers, and it pays off. Wow. Bear is able to pick up the slack. Bouncing around the box here, and this has been Baylor all night, as they've just been on top of it. Whenever it gets inside the 18, they're just not allowing TCU to get a clear shot. They've just put a body in front of the ball immediately and done a really good job of making sure that they're just not really getting a clear look on Want. And even that free kick was, again, floated. So Want couldn't get her fingertips around it to bring it down, but uh, it, it's dangerous anytime you send the ball into the box. Allie so. Henderson in on the stop of that shot. Of course, she was in on a golden goal last year in non-conference play. Ryan matched up with Horniak, the veteran against the freshman. And Ryan will win the corner for TCU. Question is who in purple takes care of this one? And Yasmeen Ryan just remembered that's her. And she's so used to having Grace Collins take care of this with the sophomore. Presumably not going to reemerge in this match. It just takes one to head back to Fort Worth. Winners. And Baylor not conceding a shot that time. And the Bears now will escort it the opposite way. And 
And again, Baylor, who had five shots, not on frame, but five shots the entire opening 90 minutes with a chance to put the punctuation on this opener in front of their home crowd. Chipped in, hoping for an opportunity for Olivia Mack. Not going to happen this time. Alvarado able to scoop it up. Emily Alvarado, remember, almost saw an own goal be the difference in this match. She was not going to be able to track it down, just went wide of that post back in the first half. A little early in the season miscommunication at the time. Didn't cost him. Slater. There you see one of the two golden goals on the resume of Yasmin Ryan a couple years ago in Norman. Ball sent in just wide. Want was not going to be able to get any fingertips on that one to deny Maddie Warren. Warren, before Messiah Bright, two years ago as a freshman, led this team in scoring. Almost got them on the bus as winners right there. And she's likely the one that earned a starting position tonight because Bright is out with her red card from uh, Arizona in the NCAA tournament, but she hasn't really had too many looks on goal this game. And I think that the movement up top of Slater has been effective, but Kaylee Abel's done a good job shutting her down after she switched over to this side. But now they're pushing Yasmin Ryan up top. She had originally started in that attacking midfield position, but uh, now in overtime especially, they've been pushing her up and out the other side. Well, we're over midway through this first overtime. Horn Frogs last year. Went overtime three times, unbeaten. It is rare that the Horn Frogs have lost in overtime. Their last 25, they just have three losses, 11 wins, 11 draws. Looking for the win here. Ryan pushed out of the area. And nice job by CJ. The freshman answering the call against the senior. And nothing comes of it for the Horn Frogs. Into space to Olivia Mack. As Baylor will have a throw coming up from in touch. Credit Peterson for TCU. Tapping that ball out of play to buy her teammates time. Three minutes to go in this first overtime. A wave of emotions when you see that player turn with the ball inside the box with no defender between she and the opposing keeper. want to see her just smack the ball, Anthony, and get a hold of it, rip one on frame, because we know that she's got that powerful shot, but TCU's just so touch tight on her that she's just not able to get any inch, any space there to get a look. Imagine any Big 12 coaches tuned in right now would be content if this one would go 110 minutes, and a point would be left on the table. Settled by Slater. Again, problem is she ran into that number six. And the effort applauded by Olivia Mack, the freshman from Manhattan Beach, California. 
You wouldn't know it from that effort. She spent most of the quarantine time back home surfing. Anything but mellow here. Part of this lockdown defense. 90 seconds to go in this first overtime. this fall, but we're not being cheated of any soccer. Already some free football underway. It stays with TCU and Mars Akins. Akins their only freshman starter. And this again stays with the visitors. will come out as Coyman's taken down. Nothing intentional there from Shalen Hubbard. Just bad timing by the junior. Quick look at what led to the card. Eyes were on the ball there and just didn't really see where Coyman was in front of her. And Focusing on those 50-50s in the middle, a lot of times you guys collide. But uh, here, this kick from Want, if they can flick it on, then they might get some dangerous chances. But really, TCU done a good job of winning these headers in the middle. Warren sends it up, was hoping Ryan could run on it. But Want will get to it first. 20 seconds away from heading into that second overtime period. Hear the countdown once more. As we say farewell to the 100th minute of college soccer. Only one overtime period left to spare. Paul Johnson hoping that goal. ESPN Plus, second overtime period underway. Again, we've slapped another 10 minutes on the clock. No obligation to play the full 10 minutes if either team can produce a golden goal. Last year, saw Baylor scoreless in the second overtime in Manhattan against K-State, able to find their most recent golden goal. Their full three points on the road. Trying to do so here at home against another purple clad squad in the Big 12. We mentioned TCU under Eric Bell rarely goes without any points once they reach overtime. Just three losses in their last 25 overtimes. Yasmin Ryan's been a part of a lot of those, including two golden goals. 12 yards out, able to turn. And Want unable to deny the corner kick. Just a small victory for Baylor that this match continues. Mm. Nice ball here into Bryan. She gets a turn and Quarter, Unlucky quarter, again, three, block. Three, three, this white jersey is dropping in, doing a really good job of clogging up that box on defense. Uh, TCU just can't seem to get through. Five of Gracie's nine goals last year were game winners. Almost had a chance there. Right footed delivery from Yasmin Ryan. And nobody on that post able to send it home. Peyton Cruz was the nearest Horn Frog. TCU's been unable to capitalize on all these quality set pieces. And just like that, two minutes have melted off this second overtime. And I really doubt either of these teams with this unique season are just hoping that these next eight minutes disappear quickly without a goal. waited so long to take the pitch. They want the full three. Black stays down. Frogs in it in. Yasmin Ryan shots deflected wide. Can she regroup? 
so close to producing perhaps her third game winner. In overtime. Foreman trying to get something started the other one. Taylor Moon in a sea of purple. And the numbers add up that time, poked away by Hubbard. But here comes support, Horniak. Freshman looking for an impact. As Alvarado, that shot just off the mark, able to keep it in front of her. I like that. Both, both the teams need to do a bit more of that, get their outside backs involved, coming forward, opening things up and taking shots if they can, take that space and take some shots. And I think maybe you're seeing tonight too a little bit of these teams being conservative in that sense. Uh, Shailen Hubbard battling, has been a part of 18 shutouts in her time with TCU, looking for a 19th here. So far, TCU's allowed four fewer goals than last year against Baylor. Can they hang one on the Bears in these six minutes? Ryan. Sends one through. Shot comes from 17, and they'd love to have another chance at that one from Peyton Cruz. Really good movement here around the box. Came from Peterson pushing forward and opening things up. Also, Yasmin Ryan finally able to turn that corner, but nice layoff here from Brian so they could get a shot at the top of the box by Cruz. That sets up another corner kick. For TCU. And as Slater, they just have to track this one down. A little over five minutes to go. TCU competing for the first time since the first round of the NCAA tournament last year against Arizona. Baylor, early exit last year in Kansas City against Texas Tech. It's had a lot of time to think about it. They weren't sure when that season opener would take place. We eventually learned it would coincide with the conference opener here in the Big 12. No chance to ramp up. Ryan, blocked by Horniak. Coach Bell talked about how since you don't have non-conference games, you just don't have the time to figure some things out. And he said, you know, you don't have the time to be exposed, to make mistakes that are kind of okay to live with and learn because these games matter in terms of winning a championship. So a lot of uh, a lot of those things are compressed into this game tonight of trying to figure out where to put your personnel, where to make some adjustments. And they're having to do that just in a much shorter period of time. And yeah, what a time to go to a new formation this year. Baylor feels that sense of urgency, lobs one in, trying to create some chaos, but it'll drift away. That shot never... Needing to be altered by Alvarado. Two bears between Ryan and Want. She still gets that cross through. But Slater will track it down outside the area. Loses her feet with all those minutes on those wheels. Three minutes to play in this second overtime, or fewer. Moon. Baylor looking for the golden goal. Moon off her right boot, denied by Alvarado. Trying to match her scoring total from a year ago. And somehow, Ball always finds its way back to the two in purple. Yasmeen Ryan off the post. The second shot would come, but the woodwork gets in the way of the heroics from Ryan. A 
Baylor's fought so hard this game. They, they have really risen to their trademark mentality and effort. And on the one end, you've got Taylor Moon trying to slip the ball, but immediately it goes to the other end and Yasmin Ryan gets a look as it hits the post. It's just end to end at this point. And you can see here in this exchange how tired some of these Baylor players look. It sets up this corner. She keeps it low. TCU unable to take advantage of foot race. Olivia Mack won't be able to get to it in time, and this ball stays in play, and guess who? It's back to Ryan around the freshman. Ryan from the wing will win another corner with 90 seconds to go. They're going to stop play. Minute 27 on the clock for the injured bear, Horniak. All right, now for Baylor. Soccer-wise, it's survival mode with a minute 27 on their heels. Can they salvage the point from a draw? Well, um, you know, unfortunately in some of these games where it seems like you're constantly absorbing pressure, you might get one or two real good looks on goal. And Taylor Moon did have that opportunity as she took on those players and got a look, but Alvarado stepping up and cutting off her ankle there. But uh, I think you can only absorb pressure so long. It's really tough to hang in there when they're just constantly coming at you. And you're starting to see a little bit of Baylor seem to get tired here in the back. And it's I think you're right, like a matter of can they survive a minute and a half and see if they can get something the other way. Sophomore Sumer is the substitution who comes on and immediately is in charge of manning that near post with Ryan back in the corner. And they stop the clock with a minute 27. And they help the freshman Horniak who made her debut tonight. Sumer was her high school teammate at South Lake Carroll. Part of what seems to be a green pipeline down to Waco. 14th corner for TCU. And this stays with the visitors. Just running out of steam, a goal kick coming up from Want. 109 minutes complete in Waco. Can the Bears get one final look to delight the fans here at home? The 300 who have come out to cheer on Baylor's first athletic event of the fall. Jurczak will send it in touch. Clock down to 30 seconds. Step to the side, shot will trickle just wide again. Alvarado was not gonna get a finger on it. Corner kick coming up here for Baylor. If they can get it off in these 10 seconds. Ball sent in from the corner. If it had gone home, it would have counted. Instead, a point will head back to Fort Worth. Another point will stay here in Waco. 110 minutes in this brand new season of soccer in the Big 12. A draw between the Bears and the Horned Frogs.